What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you what on an average day my tackle bag contains. Starting over in this corner, we obviously have my Wisconsin fishing license. And obviously band-aids. You never know, you might cut yourself. Something could go wrong. In this box, which I don't carry with me, I take the contents out, are all my jarred baits from Galt Power, power Bait, some spawn sacks, and my flies. So flies, power bait. Then I have a GPS, so if I am on the boat, I can see what coordinates my fish have been biting at. Then here I call it the bottle of gross. It's all the really horrible smelling baits with the preserved shiners as well. Along with some off deep woods towelettes, because I like the towelettes, which are right here, because they aren't as potent smelling as the deep wood spray. I got some knives, knife sharpener, little UV light, helps oh, see if I can get the purple glow. It helps charge the glow baits faster than normal sunlight. It charges it, I believe, three or four times more. One of those two. And I got a braid cutter for cutting braided line. So, well, I'll call it braid cutters, the blades go in. A little mouse spreader for pike, well, musky, that kind of stuff. I got my Rapala Super Lion scissors, which are awesome. They're really good. And I have a little a, a fancy hemostat here, one that has a lock on it that's really hard to get off. The cutter as well has the hook, so you can hook it onto a belt loop. And I just have my normal cheapo pliers, as if you they'll get rusty eventually, and they're starting to get rusty. And then I have my little panfish hemostat. Now on to my terminal tackle. I got a couple sizes of split shot, but this is the main bulk of it. I got my little water gremlin here. Removable split shot, 40 pack. Then I have the 100% no tie, which are really kind of cool. I believe I have two different sizes. I have the 2 to 50 just a big pack and then the 2 to 10 pound test set. Alright, I love these jigs. They're painted out in a bait shop in Delafield, Wisconsin called Dick's Bait and Tackle. Really good jigs for hooking up with a panfish plastic, which I'll show you later. Now onto those panfish plastics. This is actually a pre-rigged one that I really want to try. It's supposed to imitate a mayfly nymph. Made by Savage Gear, got it at Bass Pro Shops. It's supposed to be really good. I haven't had the chance to try it quite yet. But over here, these are also made at the bait shop that those jigs I showed you earlier are made at. They are little split tail grubs. However, they're not paddle tail split tail, which is nice. So if you don't want the paddle tail, it might give off too much vibration. These are a nice alternative, and they're the only place that I know that ever carries them is their hand poured. Then I have some Kalen branded crappie scrubs. This is in the Tennessee, Tennessee shad color. Then I just have my Mr. Twister, some clear ones. Well, not clear, but kind of kind of clear. Then I have some white ones. These are Northland made, but same deal. Then over here I got my minnow imitations. I got some Zoom rigged shads. I got kind of a chartreuse black color. And a white on white color. Then I also have these little Havoc paddle tail minnows. They're really kind of cool because they are supposedly called sick fish color. I guess, I guess that's because of the blue head on them. But about my clearance, I believe they don't make this size and of this color anymore. It's nice because there's five of them and they're in this little tray to keep them all organized. That's in the pack. They're made by Berkeley Havoc. Really quite nice, and that's a bit more of a more an obstructed one. Some of my other minnow imitations are these Kalen's 5 inch jerk minnows. This is an Arkansas shad color. Really nice, they're really soft plastic. It's kind of a ball of them, but if you can make one out, they're really soft plastic and really good action. And the tail isn't too bad, it's just a little fork. There it is. Just a little fork in there. And then I also have another set of jerk minnows. 
These are the Green Shiner color. Green Shiner and Kaolin's. They're really good. Same deal, really good plastic. Really good action on it. Some of my worm imitations, however, are also made by Kaolin's and they're really good. This is the 5 inch Wacko Worm in Green Pumpkin Magic. And they are garlic and salt impregnated and they are really garlicky. And it doesn't wear off with one cast like some of the other brands that I've tried to do. The scent really stays in there. And that was the Green Pumpkin Magic and this is my favorite color, the Baby Bass. And also the 5 inch Wacko Worm. So it has that lighter side on the darker side with the splake, with the flakes in it. So, but some of my other miscellaneous kalins are these three-inch scrubs. If you can tell, if you can't tell, I really do like the kalins products. And this is green pumpkin seed, but there's also some purple colored, purplish blue colors in there too. Because when I ordered them, they came in two different style packaging: one in like a tray and one in the bag. So I just combined them. They're a little paddle tail scrub, kind of like the crappie scrub. It's actually the same bait. It's on a bigger scale. So, three inch scrubs made by Kalins. And these are really cool. These are actually Upton's Customs brand. You would think it would be hard to get because of the word Customs in there. They're actually pretty easy to get. You can get them on TackleWarehouse.com. And I will post a link to them in the video description. These are cool. They're reaper style, so they supposedly imitate a leech. You can see from the bag, there's a lot of salt on them. And they have like almost like an anise scent, but more sweet. Is that how I'm going to describe it? It's kind of a hard to describe scent they have to them. They're really good. These are three and a half inch reapers in dark watermelon purple. Another bait I have, uh, Kalen's again, are my tubes. I use Kalen's tubes. This is a 3.5 Kalen's tube and a 7 pack of bluegill color. They just look like that dark pumpkin magic, but if I can get one to do it, the inside of the tube, when the tails are going all over, there's a little bit of blue in them. And that's how they get the bluegill color. Also made by Kalen's. And these are a brand new bait I got about a week ago and was trying on some local golf course ponds. This is the Kalen's Seismic Toad Bullfrog color. Really good. There's the front of them. Really nice. Really good paddle tail action. They do sink because they are quite heavy. So you have to keep the bait moving if you want to keep it on top water. And there's the back of the, and the belly of the bait. Right there. It's a really nice color. But then I also have my spinner baits. I put trailer hooks on all my spinner baits and buzz baits. Give you more chance of a hookup. And a couple different colors. I really do like the spinnerbait boxes because they have the little grit grits in there, grids, so you can kind of organize them very nicely and hang them up rather than just throwing them in. Then I have my my te terminal tackle box. I have all my bobbers. You can see some of the old school rocket bobbers, which I still like. And I got my worm hooks, my frog hooks. These are kind of cool, if you ask me. They're expensive. But they're really nice for rigging a soft plastic frog. This has the frog hook and then it's actually a double hook. And they're really nice for just rigging a frog up. For example, there's Kalen's frogs. And I got my screw lock super line hooks. And I got some trailer hooks and tubing for the trailer hooks. Got my bobber stops and pegs. And I also have my tube jigs. Lots of them as I do a lot of tube jigging. And I got my wacky jigs, which I don't use that often. I normally just take a worm hook, any extra wide gap worm hook, instead for let, to me the weight on the wacky jig kind of messes up the action. And there's the treble hooks, and I just got some really big swivels, snap swivels in there. Then I also have the, what's kind of a really unorganized box right now, but it's just kind of my basic lures. I got some got a little albino frog also got a these are this is called the pond pad crasher junior by booyah I like this size to be honest more than the normal pad crasher to me the normal pad, wash, pad crasher is so bulky of a bait that it's kinda hard to finesse it especially when you're on pads and I got my buzz baits got a little bumblebee color and some purple 
as well. A little cheap Bass Pro Shop brand popper. Really nice though because it has that dead fish with the blood coming out of the gills look to it. And I just have a little fly fishing popper right here. And I have a little black ant treble hook fly. If I have to change out a hook, I could put it on that possibly. And I got all my jigs. I like the kind of pumpkin y colored jigs to them. Because to me, that's what works best. And I just have some spinner setups. It's my little leap. The worm is the brand, and it's actually called The Worm. Then I have all my jerk baits. I got a storm and some Apollo floating juniors. And I just have some rigged jigs with spinners on them to give it a little extra flash. And this box is kind of my random lures. I have some mini mites in here. And I got a little red devil, daredevil, some Cleos. And this big old one. And this box is not a good box, even though it's made by Plano. I don't like it that much. As you can see, especially right here, how all the hooks are kind of migrating from compartment to car compartment. So if any of the guys from Plano are watching, I would suggest making a tighter fit for it. Got a little bell sinker, got some hooks. Most of my hooks are in here, my smaller hooks that is. Then my open bags of split shot and split shot. And then I have up my three-way swivels, my swivels, and snap swivels as well. Then I got my little Cabela's clearance octopus circle hooks for when I, and size 2 watt for when I'm rigging up a wacky and if I don't have a worm hook handy. And this I should probably put it in a normal box now that there's only two left in the packaging. A little bait holder, and laser, you will call it laser sharp size 8 packet for panfish. And I also have the red size tens, so a little bit smaller. For those of you wondering how I possibly fit all of this stuff out on the water with me, it's this bad boy right here, the Tackle Warehouse backpack. It's really nice. It has this mesh pocket out here that's rubberized, so you can put a lure out there to dry before you put it away. It has the pliers thing, side pocket, big enough to put actually a liter of soda. The leader bottles that Pepsi has come out with recently. Another side pocket, big mesh pockets for rod tubes, supposedly, and then there's the clip to put the rod tube on. And if you open it up, it's really kind of cool. There's actually hooks that are supposed to be in here. I took them out so you can hang bag, like a bag organizer system, to hang up your soft plastics. I don't personally use it. This to me it kind of is bulky, and I don't like that. But some people do, and then it has a little waterproof license thing right now. That's my old boat licenses in there. You can put a camera, you can put a set of sunglasses or whatever. If you're going to go sunglasses, make sure they're polarized so you can see into the water. Another zipper pouch, nice for first aid stuff. 